Hello everyone I welcome you back to the channel today we have with us a very special guest who will be guiding you on a very special and a unique topic because on this particular topic there is not much to you know guide about nobody has gui uh, given guidance regarding this topic in good detail and today my uh, you know sort of initiative was this only that i should connect with you the best possible person for guiding on this topic so today we have with us dr anujit paul sir he is an ophthalmology resident he is also a peer reviewed pubmed index researchers with greater than 100 citations also he is the co-founder of doctors for cause which is a large uh, one of the largest medical student based ngo and national president of gcmer which is again a very large organization fostering students with medical research so i guess this was quite a huge uh, kind of in, uh, introduction for sir uh, i welcome you on this channel and want to thank from all of my viewers for guiding us on this topic thank you so much akshat it is indeed a pleasure i'm a big fan of yours so finally being on the channel is also a huge moment for me so uh, we can just go ahead and dive right in so uh what's every what does everybody want to know yes thank you so much sir also this topic is very important for me as well because i have also faced many difficulties in ug times there's not much to be known about research but today we will try to discuss some very important questions so let's start with the interview sir so now first okay. question is that what is the importance of research in ug times right like maybe many of us have heard ki acha research hai to yaar pg mein ja ke kar hi loge thesis banana hi padta hai sabko karna padta hai but if you start researching in ug times to uska ek kya importance hai zaruri hai kaise karna hai wo sab aap thoda sa bataiye so uh, everything that you read in undergraduate textbooks at one point of time was a research topic somebody right. thought of a question somebody thought of a relation a correlation and decided to ask that question and that is how research came into being uh, some people got a, got very famous and some researchers have been named and are continuously studied again and again and again but the whole point of doing research is to know what is actually happening around us and why that is happening right. so in a nutshell you should do research why because in a way it gives you the current scenario about what is happening around you your textbooks are only maybe giving you one fourth or one tenth of what is actually the disease and what is actually the prevalence the incidence the treatment why a treatment has come into being is where research comes into play and one more thing that i would like to add right in the end is that doing research sort of humbles you it tells you and it reminds you how much you do not know about the world how much you do not know about science and how much there is left to know so even something as simple as mitral stenosis where we always study um mid diastolic murmur with a pre systolic accentuation that has also come from a huge amount of research and the more you get into research and the earlier you get into research you become humble and you know the vast scope of medicine in general right so very important you know sort of a topic that whenever we study we study very page to page ki acha anatomy hai ye relations hai ye aap kar liye but you need to understand that is kitab ke bahar jo actual medical practice hai you can learn it in wards and also you can learn in it in research because when you will collect a database then you will know that acha what is the prevalence of this disease in our country as uh, as of now so right so like sir if you know many students are really interested may uh, want to do that research wala thing but they don't know what should be the approach to it what should be the pathway kahan se shuru kare second year mein aake sochte karenge third year aane lag jata hai fir final year ka dar se kuch bhi nahi ho pata hai right so like uh, according to you what should be the you know right time and the pathway for uh, doing research so uh, in my opinion there are two pathways you can take the first pathway is in case and if uh aapka college is very into research sometimes a lot of departments are very focused on research they even percolate it to undergraduates so if your department is into research just show your enthusiasm as a junior researcher everybody jaise ward work hote hain and all that everybody wants to dump their work on the junior most person and in the junior most person shows a bit of enthusiasm he or she can somehow mingle their way and get into some sort of an authorship with research but the main question which most people want to know is that what happens if my college does not or if my department or if my subjects or my professors do not give me any research opportunities right. so in that case also there is nothing to fear there are a lot of organizations in general that deal with research i am the national president of gcmer so uh, maybe we can link that below 
GCMR is an organization that tries to foster research among medical students, especially for students who do not have exposure to research. Right. Another very interesting organization is the Auto Research Organization. You can find them on LinkedIn. It's O double T O. That is something which I am not a part of, but I definitely follow, and I would like to recommend them. And if you are just starting off with research, my suggestion would be. go to youtube.com and type research methodology there are a lot of basic statistical basic guides on how to start research kyunki research is basically like mathematics there is very little to learn but there's a lot to practice right. seekhne ke liye there is only about 2 or 3 hours of content that anyone can teach you but after that it is you using that content and you using your gray matter and trying to figure something out so in a nutshell approach your college if not i've named two organizations you can approach that if not if that is does not work there's youtube as well uh, very recently i started my own set of a uh, mentoring program for young researchers it's available on my instagram page you can log in and have a small chat with me discuss your research topic this is for anybody who does not know anything about research has just started a research topic and does not know what to go ahead with or as someone who's done their first research topic and now it's kind of unsure about whether it will go in for publication or after the first publication what to go about so these are your options i'm always here to help and i've named some sources which might be helpful as well right definitely sir so on the similar note like you said that you have also you know started guiding students so on the similar note students would like to know that how they should approach a mentor राइट इन फर्स्ट ईयर एमबीबीएस वैसे ही काफी ज्यादा डर रहता है प्रोफेसर से नो बडी वॉन्ट्स टू यू नो गो अड एंड टॉक टू देम सो हाउ वन शुड यू नो बेसिकली ट्राई टू अप्रोचिंग अ मेंटर दैट कि उनके अंडर यू कैन यू नो लर्न दिस रिसर्च थिंग तो आई गिव यू माय ओन एग्जांपल टिल माय फर्स्ट ईयर ऑफ पीजी आई डिड नॉट अप्रोच एनी मेंटर एंड आई न्यू नथिंग अबाउट रिसर्च बट अबाउट 18 और 20 मंथ्स डाउन द लाइन आई हैव डन अ लॉट so uh, if anybody over here is feeling that it's too late for them i am the latest in the entire list of people and i've made it quite well for myself so pehle ke first thing is that try and not be too demoralized if you want to start off early that is a very good thing but if you are not starting off early the easiest way to approach a mentor is to just tell them very very honestly that i want to do research and i don't know where to start because most adept or advanced researchers do not want to do the research any more themselves they are actually looking for someone to pawn it off to okay. so it's a basically a hit and try method where you go ahead and try everywhere and somebody will give you something right so it's very important to you know keep trying and that keep that zeal uh, inside you ki ye nahi hua ki acha ek professor ne bola abhi kuch nahi hai research ko to aap ne kahi chodo chodo ab so it's very important to keep that alive and also sir on the similar note you know uh, many students usually think ki yaar research to aisi cheez hai jo cv building mein kaam aayegi us assembly ke liye kisko prepare karna ho lab ke liye prepare karna ho neat pg agar jisko karna hai to wo sochta hai chodo mcq hi lagate hain right so like wo ek cheez jo mentality hai ki research is not just a cv building exercise rather it is something which keeps you into the medical field so uh, some points on that that uh, is it really you know something which is not a must but uh, should be done in the neat pg scenario also if you are even staying for that so it's definitely not a must there are some disadvantages to having a research oriented mindset so i'll first discuss some advantages right. firstly like i mentioned it does humble you it does tell you what is happening aur dusri cheez hai ki you know why certain things are written in textbooks because of research papers that you study right many a time they tell you that this is the drug of choice from right. first year second year third year final year you're wondering why is this the drug of choice yeah. but when you go into the nitty gritty or the background of it you'll realize that everyone has tried everything and then right. has come to a conclusion so right. you stop taking things at face value even when you look at a patient later on if you read research papers you will try to change the treatment you will try to alter the treatment so it, it's not only about getting publications and getting a good slot in us assembly or in lab or anything like that um in a way it will change the way you diagnose a patient it will change the way how you decide to take risk because in a research paper ultimately it's people taking risks and coming out with results right. and if you do not get out of your comfort zone you will always treat the patient with the same drugs in the textbook right. so the more you get yourself into research this is i think the biggest um unsaid advantage that comes out right right so kuch naya karna jo ek mentality hai on that thing this is very advantageous what are some disadvantages sir as you said like 
so a uh, few disadvantages that come across is coupled with advantages as well so when you know that certain side effects are there and certain drugs do not work this is only ultimately a statistical side effect that means it is based on probability so agar 100 mein only 10 chances that some drug will work against some disease that does not mean that you diss out your entire clinical acumen and your entire practical risk taking behavior and you do not give a drug to a patient right. so if you get too into research if you get too into thing you will get too into protocolizing your treatment and your management and somehow you will not become a doctor that decides to take risk jaise hum dekhte hain in these famous medical shows like the good doctor and house and gray's anatomy and stuff doctors take risks and that changes the game so mm. somehow if you know if you are too oriented to research you don't become a risk taking doctor so it's like a double edged sword but mostly it is beneficial right but it's very important that as you you know proceed ahead in the your part you can keep modifying whatever your uh, mentality is and strike a balance so that you can do good for your patients as well right so like as you mentioned you know a uh, uh, pretty uh, number of platforms that can help students in research any other specific you know platform opportunity or anything like newsletter which you know student can subscribe to stay updated for research in ug times so uh, there is a magazine called lexicon magazine uh, as we speak they are having their own research methodology workshop um if people are watching this in time i'm sure you link it and they can go into that if not the lexicon instagram page is also a very good source for uh, getting oriented into research so the first thing that any student must do is that nobody just like nobody goes ahead and teaches you how to uh, draw blood or how to take vitals these are some things which you are expected to do in a ward similarly in research there are certain things like how to do citations how to do a re- uh, review of literature how to reference articles how to do a pubmed search there are multiple sources online which reference this so what i would suggest if you have no resource at all just youtube it don't worry about the authenticity on youtube most of the things which i have seen on a preliminary search of research methodology is authentic other than that you can go for lexicon you can go for gcmer you can go for the auto research uh, organization all of them cater to medical students who have no idea who have no clue who are stuck somewhere in the middle and uh, like i said that uh, if anyone is interested they can approach me as well and i would be more than happy to help them out right so like uh, everyone should understand that the basic you know research ki jo methodology hoti hai chahe wo biostat so chahe jo mathematical part ho this would remain more or less same aisa nahi hai ki medical research mein kuch alag ho jayega तो बेसिक्स आपके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू शुड बी वेल वर्स्ड इट चाहे आप किसी भी प्लेटफॉर्म से करें एंड आफ्टर दैट यू नो यू कुड गेट योरसेल्फ एंगेज्ड विद अ मेंटर एंड प्रोसीड अहेड सो नाउ सर yeah ek cheez aur i would like to mention is that uh, you don't need to be a medical student to do research yes. i have written research papers where my co-authors are not medical students they yes. are lab technicians they are nurses yes. so yes. it's very important to know that it's not just doctors and medical students who contribute to finding a disease or reporting a disease the entire medical fraternity including a lab technician or somebody who draws the sample can be included as long as they know enough about the research topic so anyone and everyone can read so don't think that just because you're a medical student it's on you right right definitely that's a very you know a uh, good take away message so sir like uh, research is something you know which is very uh, sort of not exhausting but yes it is something which takes efforts which take patience and which may or may not yield a good outcome whatever you are expecting at times so now uh, on the similar note if you have any you know such incident ya achievement which inspired you also to you know ki bachcho ko research karna chahiye aap inspire bhi kar pa rahe hain so any achievement any incident ke jisse aapko laga nahi yaar acha tha jo maine you know is path ko chuna and any such you know uh, kissa aap batana chahe to so uh, this is actually more of an anecdote than a story so pehle i would always think that to do research you have to find something extremely rare extremely yes. never researched and i think a lot there's a lot of roadblock in people's minds thinking that i can only start a research topic if i find a rare cause of a rare disease right. and that is very very far away from the truth right. so actually you just need to find something that adds some some new valuation to the existing literature pool that is number 1 number 2 something that is of practical value for example 
let's take the most famous disease. For example, you take rheumatic fever. Rheumatic fever is very common. But if you find one possible association of it, which is important for the future diagnosis of rheumatic fever, one association of it may be related to the eye, may be related to the bones, you can report that. Right. And finally, what we feel about research is that somehow only if you write heavy words and only if you write complicated words and only if you mention how extensively you've uh, looked into the topic, then only the reviewer or the journal will accept your research. But right. one thing that people fail to understand, and this is uh, quoted by the British Journal as well as the American Journal, is that they appreciate about they appreciate uh, you mentioning your shortcomings. So if you do a research paper and you could not analyze something, and if you mention it within your paper, for example, you're writing an original article on COVID and rheumatic fever, and you could not analyze the patients with severe COVID who had rheumatic fever and you are honest enough to write it in your discussion that this could not be analyzed by us because of whatever original reason you're citing because of lack of time because the patient expired too early for us to take these blood samples for us to do a bedside echo the journal will find it very logical and very understandable and the chances of your acceptance are more so these are two lessons that I have learned number one is that uh, a very very rare cause plays no role in research. It has to add something new to literature. And number two is that honesty goes a long way. As long as you're very honest about the results you obtain, there are very high chances of publication. Right. Right. So definitely there's, you know, a fascinating side of research uh, you know, complex words and jo abhi aap, abhi you, if you know, agar batch mein se do research karte hai, aur ek paper present karke aate hai, conference mein, like maybe ek bar gaya tha. So it was very something very unique experience. Look, are doctor type baate karne lag gaye abhi se, right? But you need to understand that there are simple things which are, you know, maybe decorated in a bit manner, but the main physiology remains the same that you need to understand the topic and add value to the reader as well as your patient. So, right. So, uh, I guess we have done fair justice with respect to the time and, uh, whatever sir could guide in this particular video, obviously there's a lot that you need to be doing in your entire journey for which you can also connect with sir on his Instagram handle. I'll mention the link. So, sir, final, you know, sort of a message to the young researcher minds nowadays, you know, medical students are very well, uh, versed with all the aspects. First year, say they want to prepare for NEET PG as well. They want to take marrow, prep letter, whatever is available. They also want to read standard books. They want to do everything. They also want to do many things, right? So on the similar note, they should obviously be inclined towards research. So one sort of final message from your end. Uh, one final message from my end would be don't underestimate the power of reading. By reading, I don't mean scanning a textbook or scanning a research paper or looking at the abstract or just asking someone for information. Whatever information you find, whether it is a PDF, whether it is something, the first step of research is understanding and understanding can only happen by reading. So if you're preparing for NEET PG or you're preparing for your next research topic or you're preparing for PLAB or anything, one thing that has really helped me is reading the lines, reading from top to bottom and trying to understand because you'll become a better student, a better academician, a better doctor and via all that, a better researcher. Right. Definitely, definitely. Uh, that's so nice of you, sir, to deliver this kind of information on this portal. I wish that, you know, students can always mention their queries in comments as well so that sir can maybe respond to it. And also, if you have any such, you know, uh, issues, you can let us know. We will try to maybe cover it in next part of videos, whatever we wish to guide you upon. So thank you again for your time, sir. I hope that students learned a lot from you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Akshat. It was a pleasure being here. You're welcome, sir. Okay, students, take care and keep learning and keep proceeding in whatever path you are on. Thank you so much.